Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patrons and you advice on how you can improve your miniature painting. Let's jump in and have a look at these awesome submissions. Okay, first up we have Tyke86 who says, Evening gents, I tried to push myself a bit harder on this guy and had a bit of fun sculpting a custom base for it too. Would be great to get a critique on what worked well and what didn't. So I think this miniature overall is painted really, really well. I think there's a lot of things on there that show demonstrable skill, uh, understanding, and also technical execution. Um, I think there's some things which we'll talk about as we go through this, which just, just I think you could just tweak or tighten up or just make them read the same if they're the same sort of thing. And I'll explain that a little bit now. So first up with the non-metallics. Uh, overall, I think they look really nice. I think there's some little bits on there that are a little bit inconsistent. And what I mean by that, for example, is on the waist, you've got these lovely kind of cylindrical kind of golden objects. And you can see that you've blended it. So it's got the, the, the sort of like the light source and obviously that, that linear bloom down the, um, down the sort of the, the apex of the curve of the cylinder. The, the, when you look comparatively next to it, as in the, uh, the bottom of the, the axe, that golden part that you've painted on there, it's exactly the same shape, but it doesn't have the same attention to detail with regards to like the tonal variance or the blending of the colors, uh, or even have a linear uh, like highlight that a cylinder would have. So I think that that's just a little bit of a, of a they're, they're reading as different things because that they don't look the same, if that makes sense. Um, and then ultimately they're both gold, they're both cylinders. So they would be the same, if that makes sense, in the way that they're lit um, and things like that. So I think that's just something that's to be conscious of. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's just like a, a continuity thing because I think one thing that I would like commend you on is the overall NMM is is well executed and, and by that I mean it reads as metal, which yeah, I yeah, think is yeah. the first and foremost like important thing um, when it comes to sort of like looking at the, the big picture of the mi miniature, if that makes sense. But I do agree with you. I think when you look at some small individual components in like more detail, I think that it's quite evident with, for example, like uh, the sort of metallic parts on the braids of the beard here there's sort of been more attention spent on them than there has on some of the other surfaces. I think the main culprit for that really is just sort of the the hilt of of the axe itself. Um, I think the axe blade is, is painted very, very nicely. Yeah, I like really the way, like that a lot. The shine and shimmer on the, on the silver. And I think one thing to bear in mind as well is obviously in terms of like finish, you've got obviously like dull metallics and like really, really bright, shiny, polished metallics. I think sometimes when you're using the same sorts of tones, but you haven't gone to the same uh, perhaps effort in the way that they're highlighted, it can make one appear as like shiny than the other but i don't think that's necessarily like intentional if that makes sense no but i mean we don't know if maybe that the the painter wants to draw the attention to certain specific details and that's something whether you've in, in done that by choice or just it's just happened as you painted the model like for me when you look at it like the braids at the end of the beard and also the hair they're probably the most prominent catching parts of the model because they 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 bit more saturated or brighter in color if that makes sense um and that's that's really kind of like what what my eye is drawn to when I yeah first, that's fair first i'll agree with that i think um slightly conversely though the sort of like uh, metallic sort of scale mail on on the waist i think the way that that's been highlighted is perhaps not bright enough to read quite like silver for my eye it reads a little bit gray yeah it, do, it doesn't it doesn't have as much of a, of a sort of like zest of light to it if that makes sense yeah, like, yeah. It, it, I, I find it harder to read that as metal then I do the gold to read as gold. If that yeah, makes sense. I agree with that. So, so yeah, um, I think looking at the base, like this is a really cool base. I, I like the way that this like overall silhouette looks. I think yeah. it's framed really nicely. It's like a triangle. Um, yeah, it's exactly. Really, it's really cool. It draws the eye nicely. I think there's like a nice amount of detail down here without it being too distracting as well. Um, I like what you've done with the waterfall. If I was to nitpick, perhaps I think like maybe there's just some like slight bubbling and things in there, which maybe could have been avoided um i'm gonna be a devil's advocate on this bit because it's like right at the bottom where the water is hitting the ground i think you can probably get away with it because it's frothy i think you can get away with it i don't yeah. i don't i'm not even saying that it looks bad necessarily i think it's just like a bit of a scale issue for me i, I talk about all the time like kind of the immersion when you're looking at yeah, a yeah. miniature i think things like that kind of remind me that okay yeah, this was like resin poured by hand if that makes sense um i'm not some expert in pouring resin don't get me wrong but I, i'm sure there's potentially a way to maybe mitigate some of that um because it's really nice and clear over here yeah, yeah. i'm not really getting I, I, i'm sure there's a level of like intent with this but i think maybe the scale and the way that that's worked uh hasn't been quite executed to its fullest potential i know people use like little glass beads and things like that to create like bubbles and things i think that to me would have been more in sense of scale um, yeah. than some of these effects down here. Yeah, I mean, I, one thing that I, I noted on, on the base itself is that the when you look at the, there's a, the, the model and the base are not balanced in the sense of the way that they, they look painted. 
Obviously, the model is very, very well painted or well painted. Um, the base, it just you haven't put as much into it as you have on the miniature. Um, and I think that if you were to balance it and put as much, uh, as much sort of like time and effort into sort of like the rock and painting the rocks and doing different kind of tonal variants on the rocks and adding some texture and some interest on there, um, I think that it would balance better. Um, I don't even think that it's a it's an effort thing. I think maybe this is just like a stylistic execution because the, the yeah. base is like much more realism. Yeah. And yeah. this is very much like fantasy, artsy. But that's painting. what I mean. Because of those two things, they 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 almost separate a little yeah. bit, you know. Um and like the thing is all the rocks that are under that resin pour, if you would have painted them, um then it would just it would have painted the rest of the base. It would actually then just join it all together a bit better. Um, I think the only thing I, I noted on was on the orc skull. It's got like a greenish hue to it. And I when I first saw it, I was like, was it glowing or is it just like a mossy kind of thing? And I'm going to guess that it's a mossy kind of thing. Um, I think something potentially to do on that would be to like just stipple, uh, start with dark or light, whichever end of the spectrum you want to start and do, and just do loads of increased stippling layers, uh, leaving the previous a little bit of the previous layer before each of those layers that you put on to add a bit of variance of tone and it will just give you a bit more of a realistic kind of mossy kind of look on the skull yeah i think similarly as well like it's just the style thing like this this skull to me is painted in almost a completely different style to the the rest of the, yeah. the main single figure in the way that this is like got these like you know like edge highlights on them um and obviously there's the the glazed in texture of the moss and stuff which i think is absolutely fine it's just a little bit disconnected i think because i would have expected this to be painted with you know the highlights I would have expected like blends and like this sort of like blooming light reflecting uh, on like the top of the skull, for example, whereas this doesn't have that. This is more of like almost like an heavy metal style. Yeah, yeah. I think the gems I really, really like. I like the fact that you've used uh, primary color triads. So you've obviously got the blue sort of cloth work. You've obviously got the, the yellow tones of the gold. And then the, the, all the gems are in the settings are also in like a ruby or like a ruby, so to speak. I think that works really nicely. The catch lights look good. Um, you know, and the, the coronal highlight where the light's refracting through the where the light's refracting through the gem from above. It looks really, really good. Um, but yeah, overall, I think that it all looks it looks great. Yeah, lovely piece. I think uh, with with display pieces like this and, and pushing your painting skills is just about fine-tuning those little nitpicks and things. And obviously, some of what we said is just going to be down to personal yeah, of course, preference yeah. and opinion. And, you know, by all means, this is an absolutely fantastic piece. Um, this is what we like to do of our own work as well, is like taking a photo of it, zooming in, thinking about all the little nuances and little details and seeing if you can push it even further. 100%. Okay, next up we have Max who says, I'm looking for some critique on my Lord Inquisitor. Uh, this is the best miniature I've ever painted and I really want your critique and suggestions on what to really refine. Okay, well, it's great to see that you're uh, finding improvement in your painting. Um, you said that this is the best miniature you've painted, done a great job, um, especially for, you know, tabletop and things like that. I think there's a, a lot of really, really positive things that you've demonstrated with your ability and technique with this model. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll just sort of dive into some of those and maybe give you some pointers for where to go next. So not ne not to necessarily say that there's anything wrong with this miniature, but some things that we would take from this and say that you could probably apply to the next one that you're painting. Yeah. Um, first and foremost for me uh, would be, similarly to what I spoke about with the previous one, it's, it's the continuity of immersion. And that for me is coming in with the basing. So I would say for me, it's pretty important to actually paint the basing material. Yeah, I agree. Um, I know there's uh, people sort of think in their head like, well, I want them to look like rocks and they already look like rocks. So why would I paint them to look like rocks? <laughs> Which I understand. Um, however, it's it's just the way that the 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 surface finish is, is completely different to something that's been painted. Um, and you'll typically see from majority of painters that we do paint the basing material. The main reason for that is just so that it looks the same as the model. Um, and it fits that same like artistic style and whatnot. As well as that, it will help to seal in the basing material, yeah. stop little bits from falling off and things like that. It's it, it's so easy to do. Like you can spray spray the whole the whole surface once you've applied all of your basing material. You can go in with some washes. You can go with some dry brushes. Go in with your brush and individually pick things out, paint them, highlight them as far as you want to go. Um, but I think even something very very simplistic looks better to me than like the just, unpainted just finish. unpainted basin yeah no i agree completely um the the first thing i thought i wanted to talk about on this was was just sort of the flesh on on the uh on the on the face i think one of the things that um that when we all start painting we we just put like a wash over or flesh or like wash over things like that and that's perfectly fine when you're when you're starting to starting out but to really go, kind of start developing more control and understanding of shapes and all those kind of things, what we'd actually recommend that you do on this is actually rather than washing the whole entire head or the bone on the shoulder uh, pad, for example, or things like that, um, is to just get either be it a shade or get it like a, a thin down paint. You make your own wash out of some acrylic paint, which works really, really well. 
um, and actually just strategically place that in the softer uh, shadows and depths and then like a dark, so you do a first stage with like a softer one and then you do progressive uh, progressive stages of darkness as it gets deeper. Um, and it really helps to sculpt like facial details or like the bone shoulder pad or things like that. Ultimately, that helps you to have a bit more control with what you're doing and you'll get a more refined execution as a result of that. Um, as I said, there's nothing wrong with what you've done at all whatsoever. It's just a case of if you wanted to step it up, I'd probably look at rather than washing stuff all over, just placing the shadows where you kind of need them, if that makes sense. Or equally, as a bit of a stepping stone between that. Like washes typically are very, very concentrated out of the pot. So one thing that I like to do is to get a little bit of wash on the palette and then dilute it with like at least like 50% water. Apply it as if you would typically, or like all, even if you want to do it all over the head and then let that dry completely for, you know, half an hour or so, and then go back in with either the same wash again over just some of the darker features. Yeah, so yeah. like the brow line, the eyes under the nose, um, or go in with a more concentrated mix of that wash and do something very, very similar. And you'll end up with two stages of shade, but you've still applied it as if it was just a wash, if that makes sense. So it's yeah. quite easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent. The next thing I wanted to talk about, which is demonstrated really well on this miniature, is your edge highlighting. So uh, both on the shuriken catapult that she's wielding and also on the armor, you've got a really good uh, sort of execution when it comes to sort of a chunky, desaturated highlight. Uh, and then also a more refined uh, sort of sharper highlight in a slightly brighter color or more saturated color. I think that you've done really well across the model on that, even including the little dot catch lights on sort of like edges and things like that. The only feedback that I can probably give you on that is to literally continue to refine not only the way that you use the brush and just the control that you, you have when doing those edges, but also just to try and get the thickness of the chunky first stage consistent everywhere on the model. So it's the same thickness and you don't quite like apply a little bit too much pressure and it goes slightly thicker in some areas and that kind of thing. Um, and that, there are little areas of that on the miniature. But um, but I think that overall for what you've done with the edging that you've done, also on like the Shuriken Catapult or the armor, you've done a really good uh, set of edge, edges on that model. And I said, it's just a case of refining it and continue to push yourself on those edges. Yeah, one thing I think as well is like, I, I'm noticing some spots where you have done some additional sort of corner uh, and dot stages. I'm not sure if that's just from photography perhaps or if that is how you've painted it or not, but I would say like, don't necessarily stop there either. Um, anywhere there's a sharp edge or a corner or a point, like for example, on the weapon, there's some really, really sharp edges here, yeah. knee pads corners of these plates here on the on the chest and whatnot um adding some brighter stages of that same edge highlight color specifically just on those corners is a really really nice way to make you know the armor look like really nice and sharp and, yeah. and angular um it can really help sort of add contrast as well um it's a very very subtle thing um but i think it's something that's worth spending a little bit of time on because it's very very quick to do um, but it makes quite a noticeable difference in the in the overall look 100 percent yeah, but uh, great submission overall. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have Twisted Tree who says, Hi guys, completed some intercessors for my Silent Knights. I'm working on finding a level I'm happy with for squads. I'm not a quick painter at the best of times, so I do need to compromise a little. General feedback would be great, but any advice particularly about things to tighten up without adding extra steps would be hugely appreciated. Uh, I've tried darkening the metallics as you suggested. I think it definitely works in the overall scheme. I just think I need to do a little bit more fiddling with the execution of it. So it's really nice to see extra models uh, from your Impulsor, which you showed us previously. And uh, I'm glad that the darker metallics are working for you. So I'm really glad that you uh, that you found that helpful. Um, a couple of little things. I mean, just for me to start off with, I think the use of color that you've, you've gone for, the gray, the red, and the white looks really, really great. And the placement of it on the miniatures as well, like the, shoulder, the, the one shoulder pad being white, one red, it just works really nicely. Uh, even painting the skull a different color to the wings on the Aquila just is a nice way to break up the details with the colors that you've chosen for the chapter. So well done. Um, for me, looking at the models, I think one of the things that stands out in general for me, that when you talk about general sort of like advice to to not do more, but also just refine what you're doing. I think one of the things that like sort of like comes out to me when I'm looking at stuff like that is just like the way you're doing your edging at the moment. Um, I think, for example, some of the edges, uh, there's like a, a couple of edges on the legs, for example, where you've done, it looks like you've done two stages, but you've done it on one part of the leg, but then like on one of the plates on the inner thigh, and then like you've not done it on other areas of the miniature. So I think it's just a consistency thing. It's not so much adding more to the miniature. It's just when you're using that color to do that highlight stage in some areas, do it in a balanced amount so have it on both legs or have it on both kneecaps or and so on and so forth i think that's one thing just as a general bit of advice to just make sure that things are a bit more consistent not only on the individual model but also when you have a unit of them all together that highlighting is consistent across all of them i think similarly with that consistency thing that you're speaking to is 
uh, I noticed that you've got this like sort of stippled slash possibly even like dry brushed uh, like gradient texture on the gray armor and on the red, um, which I think works nicely. It sort of showcases the volumes. If you like, look at this knee, it looks really cool. Um, but I've noticed that nowhere is it present on any of the black. Yeah. Um, so I presume that that's been sort of blocked in separately afterwards. But for me, like there's a bit of a lack of continuity between the way that this knee reads and then the way that this knee reads, yeah. whereas you've got like stippled gradient texture, um, which I think looks really, really cool and it showcases the volumes. But then there's no reason that light wouldn't behave that same way on, on literally his other leg. Yeah. Um, so I would consider maybe doing that on the black. Um, even And if you want to, you spoke about time, um, maybe it's worth sacrificing the edge highlighting on the black and then doing that instead. Um, if, if that's going to be more efficient for you, um, maybe that's something to consider. I think it would just make the, the miniatures overall just look a little bit more consistent. Yeah. They wouldn't sort of stand out as this. For me, it just looks a little bit unfinished, especially when you've got it literally right next to yeah. other colors. You're noticing it here on, again with the weapon compared to like the tilt shield and you've got the Aquila right next to it. So I think when it's so stark and it's right next to it, it, it sort of draws the eye more than it should, if that makes sense. I think you can get away with it on things like the ribbing in between the, the armor and whatnot. Yeah. Um, especially because that you could I almost imagine that should look more matte if it's like rubberized material or something, you know, like on the hand grips and things like that. Possibly even get away with it on like the little bits on the tilt shield. I'm not saying necessarily to do it everywhere, but uh, I think when it's on like a volume that you've highlighted in in another way with another color, I think that does need to be applied to any color that you're doing that to. If that's the way that you're looking to treat the miniature and, and do that volumetric highlighting, I think that needs to be done everywhere. Yeah, no, I agree completely. The only other thing that I've seen uh, on the miniature, which I just think it will, is is something that you should definitely look at before you start applying paint, is obviously mold lines and things like that. There is a mold line on the arm, on the hand, on the finger. Um, just a really sharp blade just to skim that off will really help out skim it off with a sharp blade quick little buff with some sanding foam or like an emery board or something just to buff it and smooth it um, and then you're, you're good to get paint on it really just means that you've got the, everything you need done on the model so that when you put paint on there that you don't you don't sort of like see it and go oh there's a mold line we've got to go back to that stage previously try and get it all done before you start getting paint on the model yeah and i think if time is an issue i think things like that for me personally trump painting stages yeah so i would be if you've only got a limited amount of time to get it done, I would be sacrificing an additional highlight stage in exchange for getting rid of things like that. Um, because like I always speak about, it's sort of been, been a bit of a theme, is the immersion thing. So that stuff like that reminds me that I'm looking at a, a painted miniature that someone has assembled. I, I want to try and eliminate that and feel like I'm looking at this like science fiction thing instead. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if it means that, you know, you're going to do one fewer highlight stages or edge highlight stages, or maybe you're not going to do as many washes on the tax, whatever it is that you need to eliminate in the process just to make sure that the models are really, really nice and sharp and clean before you start applying paint. Uh, to me, that's really, really important. Um, but it's really cool to see the scheme coming together. Um, thank you for submitting your models. Well, a massive thank you to all of our patrons for submitting for this episode of Critique Clinic. If you're watching this video and you'd like to get feedback on your miniatures, then check the link in the description of this episode. You'll find a link to our Patreon and you can submit for Critique Clinic over there. And in addition to that, you'll get hundreds of high quality PDF tutorials and videos updated every single week on a variety of techniques. We have foundation tutorials to full character master classes. You'll also get some bonus podcast content, things like that. Some awesome benefits. Check the link in the description. Uh, otherwise, we will see you very soon on the next episode. Take care.